All right, my last episode or tutorial, we removed the side cover, took the camshaft out, took the tappets out, parked our bolts. So now you can see that we can rotate this crankshaft. And if we look on the crankshaft, we've got a dipper. All right, this dipper will go down into the oil bath because normally the engine sits this way and splash oil around the components. This plastic mechanism right here is the oil, low oil level signal. And if we look in the far back, which we'll see, we'll actually see our governor. Now, to remove this connecting rod cap, and this is the most important torque and most important position that we have of any part. If it's put on backwards, it's destroyed. Um, if it's over torqued, it's destroyed, and we'd have to toss the entire connecting rod out. So we're going to take our ratchet and just put the socket on with no extension. We've got to work our way in, find the positions where we can actually get at the connecting rod bolt. So I'm going to crack that an eighth turn. Then I'm going to rotate this and try to find a spot where I can sneak that ratchet in. I'm going to rotate it all the way over. I can just get it on right there. And I can crack that an eighth turn. And I'll crack it another eighth. And then we'll go back to the other position. Crack this connecting rod bolt off. And then normally you can get in there and work the bolts out with your fingers the rest of the way. So we're going to get this all the way out. We have two bolts. Sometimes there is nuts. Most of the small engines tend to have bolts on the connecting rod. There we go. There's one connecting rod bolt. Let's get the other one out. Here quick just to get a few more turns. And it is slippery, so sometimes having the gloves is a little nicer. You can also take the socket off, and you can take the socket, put the socket right on the connecting rod bolt, and spin the socket. Sometimes that's a little bit easier than grabbing the head. get this off things are going to start to get loose and then we're going to gently put the connecting rod cap to the side and check to see we're going to pull it out and set it exactly in the alignment that it came out these are a little tight I got two fingers in there to get that out it's quite a few turns to get a connecting rod bolt out And almost. Couple more threads. To take the connecting rod cap out. I'm going to check at the alignment so it comes right out. You can see it's got the dipper on this side and normally there are sometimes is reference marks to say hey this goes on this way okay this mating surface needs to match because when this is put on our connecting rod I'm going to set it to the side. Now to get this out we're just going to come up we're just going to press the piston straight out that one shot right out okay a little baby birth almost so <clears throat> normally it shouldn't come out that quickly we should take that out in a much nicer method so if we're looking here at the piston <clears throat> we've got the connecting rod 
cap. We're going to realign this and park it. Sometimes we'll do a little scoring mark so that we know exactly where how it goes on. We'll park this back. The number one thing you don't want to do with this is take this and whip this piston back and forth. You hear that click click? Don't do that because what it'll do is expand the skirt. And the skirt's only a two thousandths less than the cylinder wall. So if we expand it a thousandth of an inch, three times thinner than a human hair, it starts to rub on the cylinder. Okay. On this piston we have a reference mark. This reference mark faces down and that points towards the push rod. So when this piston goes back in, we always know that the piston has a reference mark pointing towards the connecting rod and that's how we know which way it goes on the connecting rod because the dipper is on the outside towards the PTO.